Oh, no, I wasn't. I was a chain smoker. I was a chain smoker and I had very serious back pain. The sports not only help mentally but also physically. Uh, then eventually I stopped smoking uh, and I understand that the natural high is the best high. But very unfortunately, it got stolen last month mm. in Klang. So if you're in Klang and you stole my bike, please, <laughs> la, brother. Hey, man, you, yeah. every, anything you do, you suck in the beginning. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Just like riding your bike, you know, you suck in the beginning every way. It's painful. You don't understand how people can ride so fast and so long and yeah. you're like 40km, you cannot already. Yeah. It's the same for uh, making videos. I'm here in Specialized PJ with uh, a very famous influencer. Like, I think you are like celebrity already. Uh. <laughs> no, no, no. Mr. Quack Shio, uh, all the way um, here at PJ Hello. in Specialized. Good SL8 you. we've got here, but very interesting topic boss. You got a lot of things to talk about. You got the ATOS, mm. SL7, mm. and then now the SL8. Mm. Uh, obviously, you're sponsored by Specialized, right? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, we have been in a pretty good relationship, I must say, from, mm. uh, from very early on. So I think you mentioned also this content creation thing is uh, definitely what's connected us la, in, this, uh, in this incident. But Specialized has been there since very early, since I was a very small creator. So they have been supporting me since. Yeah. Mm. Uh, actually, when I, before I came to KL, I, I, I texted a few people. Mm. So some people responded, some people didn't. Mm. And you have 1 million followers on Instagram. I was so scared mm. you never reply. I, I, uh, okay, <laughs> I'm just going to text him and say, just mm. try and see whether he responded to me. And you responded. So thank you so much for uh, yeah. taking your time and uh, spending time with us to, to talk about your, your your career and about cycling of course so let's let's wind it out a bit those who don't know who you are uh, one million followers on instagram mm. How, when did it suddenly explode <laughs> it suddenly exploded after the bike packing video that was with the uh, specialized diverge right the one mm. where i arranged uh, packing the bike and then form it into a song but uh, i must say it has been an intentional journey la. last year i tried to focus a little bit more on the vertical content side of things now, i must not sugarcoat things huh? i've been making videos since forever i've been making videos for more than 10 years and thus uh, i do have sort of an advantage uh, when it comes to making vertical contents but that's the current trend i do feel like usually i stay behind the camera and i make very horizontal four to five minutes content so when the whole short form comes along uh, like like you, I was I would say, you know, to make content on yourself, you want to make what you like, and I really like bikes, right? Yeah. So I start to make contents using basically bicycles, ah. and uh, yeah, I got 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 very fortunate there last right. year. Okay, mm. and let's uh, wind it back all the way. Uh, mm. how, how do you pick up cycling? Are you a COVID cyclist? Oh. Uh, he's a strong guy. I, I watch his <laughs> Instagram stories, right? He goes on 300K and like, what, 37, 35 average. That's insane, man. So uh, tell us a bit <laughs> more about that. I mean, currently I try to ride with cyclists that are stronger than me so people who are crazier than me <laughs> that's how i end up riding 300km 35 average that's really out of my plate one it was all stronger riders than me but uh, no i was not a covid cyclist in fact uh, i picked up cycling while struggling to finish my movie mm. right when i was 28 years old i tried to make my first movie it was very hard it is still very hard to make a movie so I think around the third or fourth year, I, only, I used fourth year to finish it. Around the third year, my mental condition wasn't so good. And that's when I picked up endurance sports. It wasn't cycling at first, it was running. But very fortunately, I have a gang of friends that was very curious into getting into triathlon. That's when, okay, la, they convince each other, we start to buy bikes. So of course, the first bike is not this bike. Mm. It would be an alloy bike. It's a very entry-level bike. And that's when I fell in love with endurance sports because it does balance up the creativity and the endurance thing. 
years has gone past and I went through the natural progression lah. after you ride bike for a while I took that entry level bike all the way to Iron Man half Iron Man half Iron Man after that I'm like okay I want to buy a better bike right yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it evolved uh, from one bike to the other I tried different things like a DT bike like an aero bike like ATOS a pure climbing bike and now we land with an all rounder <laughs> which I think it's, uh, it's a nice place to be if I'm honest so you were always very athletic already from the start oh, no I wasn't I was a chain smoker I was a chain smoker and I had very serious back pain. The sports not only help mentally but also physically. Uh, then eventually I stopped smoking uh, and I understand that the natural high is the best high. You see? <laughs> <laughs> so I really depend on this to regulate my mood, my mental condition. And sometimes when you run out of ideas, you get stuck. Just a simple bike ride with your friends uh, can do a lot. So cycling of, changed your, your, your lifestyle and maybe your life? I think yes. I think it is fair to say that cycling changed my life. If not, I'll just still be smoking every day, right. very stressful, always lose my temper. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Did you lose a lot of weight from, from cycling? I have always, it's the other end of the spectrum. I've always been an ectomorph. So I've always been too skinny. Hmm. Smoking so much, late night editing every time, all the time. So uh, endurance sports, uh, cycling actually made me gain a bit of weight. Mm. which is nice I feel definitely stronger than before yeah wow okay yeah, so, so your, your first bike was uh, you, you just now we were, we were having some coffee you yeah, said yeah, your yeah. first bike was an uh, Apollo bike yes it's <laughs> what Apollo. Is that? it's an Australian brand they, they don't make race bikes uh. they make endurance road bikes so it's really uh, alloy with the carbon fork that's what I would say but very unfortunately it got stolen last month Mm. in Klang so if you're in Klang and you stole my bike please lah brother <laughs> return <laughs> that bike that huh, sentimental value you know that bike all the way to Langkawi I have friends that rode to rode that bike to Malacca they did a half Everest thing on it and just got stolen like that <laughs> oh, shit, uh, man. so sad <laughs> <laughs> but how do you get that first bike so um, I, I just want to know like uh, how did you get into cycling itself and how do you make that first purchase decision on the road bike uh, honestly, uh, when you first get into cycling, you are surprised by how expensive things are. The last bike that I had was like when I was secondary school and bikes was a few hundred bucks, right? Now, huh, I have to spend a few thousand on a bike, right? Mm. But because my friends were all getting into it, I picked it based on, it was just a totally matte black bike. Mm. So I thought, okay, lah, let's just start totally black. I like my clothes, right? And it was, the, that bike shop was my friend's uncle's shop. So there was a bit of a connection. They introduced me to it and it was 11 speed 105. Hmm. So okay, la, at least it's, it's 11 speed. Uh, right, right, yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, okay, at least it has 11 speed. Although only the derailleur is 105, you know. Hmm. The crank, the caliper, oh, it's something else. Oh, it's a plumber. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, basically I picked it based on budget and also the looks up because it was an entirely matte black bike. Wow. How much was it? 4,000. 4,000. Do you know cycling was going to cost this much? No. Okay. No, 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 no. I didn't know the rabbit hole was so deep. It's like, wow. Okay. <laughs> so you're willing to put down that 4,000. Okay, I'm going to start this and let's see how far it's going to take me. Honestly, it was at a time where my finance wasn't even so good, you know. So I was actually complaining to my friends that while well, you're play, then play other stuff, so many other things to play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you want to play this. <laughs> but once I get into it and mm. started cycling there, I understand that, wow, the benefit that it brings uh, outweigh the cost so much. Uh, but of course, that has evolved and distorted through the years. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Now it's different. Uh, <laughs> now when you look at why the cost and it's, yeah. it's different uh, than, than when you first start. Yeah. So what bikes have you owned before? So after the Apollo, how did it progress? After the Apollo, because I was in triathlon, I actually got a TT bike. It was a Kenyan Speedmax. It wasn't the i2 yet. It was just the mechanical one. That's when I quickly realized that hey, a TT bike is really not for everyone. It's a very specialist bike. Is it because it's very aggressive and the, the positioning or? You don't get to break here. Mm. You, uh, because it's mechanical, you don't get to shift here. Mm. And in our road condition, in the way that we ride, it's actually not that suitable to hang out with your friends with a TT bike. Mm. I like to ride with my friends. Mm. So a TT bike is very specialist for time trial. If you ride alone and long hours, then yes. But most of the time, since I'm riding with my friends, I realized that it wasn't two for me. Not to say that the two wasn't good, hard to handle and all those things mm. separately. It just wasn't the tool for me. That's when I got another, another road bike. That's when the track Madon comes along. Okay. It was packed with the SRAM Force. <clears throat> so it was a second tier bike. I think it was 30K. And at that time, oh, I really felt like a big investment, mm. but it was the right decision uh, for sure. Moving from the TT bike back to the road bike, mm. that's when I, I would say I truly fell in love with cycling. 
Wow. Because back when I was riding the entry level bike or the TD bike, it's always multi sport, and I was I'm still better at running. Mm, mm. <laughs> it's crazy. It's, it's just genetics, It's just genetics. My running is somehow better. So the bike leg was the leg that was the second preferred leg. But after I got the Madon, that's like oh, suddenly <laughs> I became just riding all the time. Yeah. My running also stopped. I'm riding to different different places with other other uh, different different groups. Yeah. So yeah, I think I can share the same story with you because I started yeah. off doing uh, running. Mm. Then I got into mountain biking. Then I got into road. Biking ah. uh, and running, then uh, it was it also gave me the same high. You get a satisfaction. You do okay. The longest I did was twenty one k Okay. Uh, yeah. And then after that, like when you get into the road bike, suddenly like running is so slow. You know, <laughs> <laughs> the things move so slow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Everything feels the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But then uh, the track Madone. I mean, coming from the Apollo Speed Max and then the Madone, right? Mm. Uh, why the Madone specifically and not any other brands? At that time, they just released that models, not the current gen, the previous gen. It was uh, marketed in a way that it has everything. Nah. So obviously I wanted aero because I had the Apollo. <coughs> I, I tasted the aeroness in the TT bike. So if the aeroness can give me a road bike handling, that was the bike that I was looking at, mm. right? And uh, from the few brands that we went and recce and take a look, right? The Madon had just this very out there, fierce look, mm, right? Compared yeah. to the other brands. But very and aggressive. Very aggressive. And somehow they had this model, the one with the Swam Force, mm. was at the limit of my budget at the time. Mm. Like, okay, I was willing to spend 30. That was, I think, 29,500. So mm. it's like, okay, ngam ngam at the limit. Lah. And it was at a, at a tier where if I buy a Swam Force, I don't need to upgrade anything. Really. Yeah. It already has the carbon deep wheels for the aeroness and he has a SRAM uh, 4, so it's already electronic. Don't need to upgrade it, yeah. yeah. And I really didn't upgrade. I just bought that bike. I just rode until the end of his life. So <laughs> for, for those who are watching who probably are maybe new to the sport or they just started cycling, right? Mm. Maybe you can explain the sensation coming from a 4,000 uh, ringgit bike all mm. the way up to a 30,000 ringgit bike. Like I, when I first started cycling, I went to a bike, bike shop at the time uh, before Pedal Sport was even called Pedal Sport. Like, I can't remember what's the name of the shop, mm. uh, KSH or KH. And then I, I went there and then I saw the guy keying in the cash register. Someone came in to buy something. Just one small piece. I think it was like a bottom bracket. Uh. It was like four, five hundred ringgit. Like, what the hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> it's mad that we spend so much on our bike. So mm. in terms of the performance, do you think it's worth the investment that someone buys such a high end bike? Like the difference? Honestly, I would say it is worth the investment to invest on the things that you really enjoy you know, in life and it brings benefit to you. Lah. Just like camera gears also, you know, in a way, uh, camera gear you invest, it's also not cheap. It's also not cheap, but somehow even the money mm. that you spend is, you, if you know what you are getting and you're using it, then you can definitely feel it. If you jump from a 4,000 bike to the track model, to the mid tier bike, that jump is drastic. It's trusted. So you can really feel it. You can definitely, you can definitely feel it. You can definitely <laughs> feel it. The aeroness, the lightweight, how the bike respond under you. That one also jumps from alloy to carbon frame. Mm. So the entire sensation is different. Deep section wheels and all those things is totally different. Shifting from rim brake to disc brake. That is also super, super obvious. <laughs> you know, super obvious from a disc brake to a rim brake to disc brake. Right. Yeah. But then, um, so if you if you put it that way, right, that mm. uh, 30K bike can give you that performance. Mm. So as a new cyclist, I might as well save up 30K and just mm. buy the highest end bike. Will that work or should I? <laughs> you must first know that you really enjoy cycling. Mm. Because if you are the kind that maybe ride one time a week and it's not really your main hobby, you have something else, then maybe 30,000 is something that you feel is not worth the investment. Mm, right, because yeah. it is you know a considerable amount. But yeah. if you really like cycling, then yeah, I think it's definitely worth it. I okay. think thirty is the range that is the sweet spot to me. <laughs> the second tier is the sweet spot. Yesterday yeah. I filmed someone who has a Passoni. Ooh, it's a okay. hundred and thirty oh, ring. Okay, okay. <laughs> Do you I think mean, you ever get that? <laughs> uh, for people that of course uh, have the finance to do it, then of course they can buy any bike they want. Then any bike is worth it. If yeah. you have the finance, then any bike is worth it. <laughs> I mean, realistically, for me, I don't think I will spend until there because there are more things that I need to buy. Yeah, yeah, like true. filming equipment, <laughs> <laughs> setting up a studio, you know, yeah, there's yeah. more things that I need to allocate my budget to yeah. at the moment. Yeah. Okay. And uh, let's talk about Specialized. Of course, here we have a SL8, but uh, Quack has ridden the ATOS and SL7. Mm. Uh, when did Specialized come into to play and, and how was the collaboration? How do you work? Uh, at pandemic time, when we don't get to work, so I make videos for a living, I make commercials. At that time where I don't get to work, I got boring and after, I got really bored. After one month, I'm like, okay, let's make a video. So I made a few videos that was really quite well received on the internet mm. with the track Madon. Mm. So upon 
witnessing that few videos, then Specialized approached me like, hey, you know, is there any way we can work together for you to feature our bikes in your videos? At that time, it was the campaign for ATOS, jumping from a totally race machine to a non-aero, considered non-race, but super light bike. Mm. It's a drastic jump also. Mm. But at that time, because it was the pandemic, I have half an eye on doing an Everest thing. Okay. Sort of idea. Crazy. I watched the video. I watched the video. <laughs> <laughs> crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And the ATOS was very aligned in that sense, the performance side of things. So I was like, okay, I will take it on. I will try to come up with something creative as we go along. So there are a few videos that I made with the ATOS and that is how the relationship started with Specialized. Mm. It was the ATOS campaign. Yeah. Specialized, if you are, by the way, I need to thank uh, Chia and the whole Specialized gang oh, for yeah, letting yeah. us film here today. Like, they were very right. supportive. They do a lot more than, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can, I bring one, can I bring one frame home or not? <laughs> they want me to get it like, okay, connect him to Specialized and see, see, see what happens. I, I own the, the, my first Specialized bike was the uh, Specialized, it wasn't even the S-Works, uh, mm -hmm. Specialized SL6. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a size 54, a bit too big for me, but it was a great bike. Uh, mm. you know, Enjoy it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, was, it was a good bike. Then after that, I bought the Venge. Mm. Uh, then I moved on from, uh, away from specialized just to try something different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you, you, you own the ATOS and then um, how, how was that like compared to, I mean, you briefly spoke about it being a, a very lightweight bike, but in terms yeah. of going flat, can it be an, considered, considered an all-rounder? Uh, I did put a pair of rapids on the ATOS for my Ironman two years ago, two years ago. And uh, when you switch up the wheels, it performs very differently. Really? It performs very differently. So actually wheels also can be a biggest upgrade for someone, right? Definitely, definitely. Frame. I mean, uh, wheels is also very significant when you change from shallow to deep, it's very significant on the flat. Also in the climbs. So sometimes I put this with the Alpenese also if the route is like, <laughs> Just yeah. a climb around, I put it on the open is the handling is a lot faster. Right. And because I'm so used to that wheel riding the ATOS, it just feels so familiar. Right? Yeah. I, I, love it. I love to switch my wheel sometimes. So how long did you own the ATOS for? Uh, actually quite long, three, three four years. Uh. That oh, is actually the bike that I've ridden the most. Like mm. looking at the Strava stats, yeah. uh, the ATOS I think has about 17,000 km. That's the, wow. like, the bike that I rode the most right. until, until now. Okay, yeah. what's, your, what's your height and insane if you know and what, what frame sizes do you go for? Uh, I would go for 54. I am not that tall. I'm 172 like that, but the inseam is long. So I have long legs. Oh. So I, I prefer to ride the 54. Have I've ridden tried? 52, yes, I've ridden it yeah. before, but I somehow like the stability of the 54. Really? Yeah, like okay, it. so I think we are about 173, but maybe our inseams are inseam different. slightly different. Yeah, like so when I bought my Specialized, I wanted to try a, a bigger bike. So uh -huh. I went for the, the 54 uh, SL6, uh -huh. but then I felt that I was a bit too stretched out. Uh -huh. So the top view is much longer. And I went for a very short stem, which makes it look very ugly. La. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. Which, we, then we go on to your geometry or SLA later. So mm -hmm. uh, ATOS and then SL7. Correct. So they, they, they say, okay, we've got the SL7. Do we talk about gravel bikes? Because in between- If you want, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Let's right, talk about gravel right, bikes. In between the ATOS and the SL7, uh, there's also a, a moment of time where I really got into gravel exploration, bikepacking, mm. and that's when the Diverge comes along. Mm. So that one I actually bought uh, and I went and explored with it. Uh, and the, so after pandemic subside, everything went back to normal. I was not so active in content creation, but it feels that there's a part of me that is like, hey, actually I miss doing that. Mm. I miss just making videos by myself on my own time without having the clients or in my professional setting that like, like I say, I make videos suddenly from hobby, it will turn into a job one. <laughs> my one is like born as a job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's like, uh, well, it would be nice to just make videos on my own sometimes. And I linked it with the Diverge. I took it out to bike pack and shoot some nature stuff because that's how I started. Uh. Mm. But then uh, SL7, actually I wanted to buy the SL7 for very long already. Pandemic time, no stock, totally no stock. That's why I waited until the third year, only there was stock for me to purchase. Right. That's why it came so late. Uh. So when the time comes, it's already on the third year and SL8 was released uh, not long after. So the SL7, I spent a few months on it. Mm. Yeah, I spent okay. more time on the Diverge actually. Diverge. So you still have the Diverge? I still have the Diverge and uh, I got an upgrade, which is the STR. Okay. Uh, that one has the rear suspension. On the top tube, right? On the top tube, yes, yes, okay. yes, yes. So th that one, that there is a, you know, like how rough and uh, gnarly the terrain is, there is a specific gnarliness that mm. it really just cancels it out. It's quite amazing. Mm. It's quite amazing. So do you, are you more of a gravel guy or road bike now? <laughs> I'm more of a road bike guy now, if I'm honest. And yeah. Most of my friends uh, ride road bikes. Uh. So the social aspect, uh, obviously I'm drawn to riding my road bike 
uh, a lot more. Mm. But there was a period where I ride gravel bike quite, quite, quite a bit. Quite quite a bit. Yeah, okay. I really enjoy it. I really enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. And you had the SL7 and then the STR. Mm. Uh, how, how was the, the, the sensation difference between, of course, the ATOS, mm. SL7, and maybe if you could compare it with the Madone? Mm. <coughs> uh, I must claim this this Madon is the older generation one and it's on the second tier but while I was riding the Madon I do face a few things that I have some issues with uh, the way that the head tube was designed your steerer cannot go over a certain limit mm. it will hit the frame mm. the pain will crack and last time I didn't have my SUV I was still because I just got into the sport so it was still like a sedan uh. mm. you need to fold it and Correct. that always has some problems when the chain drops, it will get stuck inside. You need to yank it out and you destroy the frame a little bit. Mm. The ISO speed has a bit of play, but I think all these things, they fix it. Mm. It's just that my- With that, the newer gen. Yeah, that previous generation gave me issues like that. Then when I jump on the ATOS, because ATOS is designed to be round tube, yep. very easy to service. It was a bike that has very minimal issues. Minimal. I really have no problem with the bike. Only thing that I faced a lot was punctures uh, because the old Alpenis was tube. Mm. And it came with a uh, tube. Uh, so mm. I'm a big fan of tubeless. Uh. <laughs> Shit, I'm, I'm on punctures. <laughs> <laughs> a big fan of tubeless. Uh. So when I jump on the SL7 until the SL8, I have not punctured before. Uh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> While I was riding the Madron, I was on tubeless already. Yeah. So that would be the biggest jump. But in terms of riding sensation, you lose aeroness. But that bike is so light, man. On yeah, any it was light. Just now there was one here. Uh, all right. One That's of your buddy's bike. My friend's bike. Yeah, right? Yeah, light, man. On any climb, you'll be smiling. La. <laughs> any climb, all your PR on the climbs now, or you whacking <laughs> with the ATOS or the PR. <laughs> but, but of course, <laughs> being a light bike, you sacrifice the aeroness like you just said, right? Correct, correct, so correct. So I think you really have to determine what kind of rider are you. Like, you're going to yeah. go on flats, or you're going to go on climbs. Like, Malaysia, nice place to climb. So, uh, right? Actually, I would say when I jump to the SR7, uh, that's when you get really everything. Hmm. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> we, are, we, are, we are next to a highway. <laughs> when, you, when you jump to an all rounder, that's where, because uh, it is marketed as the one bike to do them all, right? They try to include everything, and you do feel it. You do feel that they include everything. Hmm. This is even crazier because now, with the knowledge that they have with the ATOS, they somehow managed to import the lightness and also the comfort. ATOS is very comfortable. They want right to Penang, don't feel anything, man, really. Mm -hmm. Don't feel anything, man. Yeah. They somehow managed to import that into a race bike. So, right. yeah. Let's, let's move into the SL8. Yeah. This is the S-Works <laughs> SL8 size 54. Yes, correct. Uh, give us a, a run through of your everything they have on. Uh, I mean, this is going to be a little less interesting than your normal, <laughs> normal interview. This is stock. I like writing stock. <laughs> I didn't even change, you know. I didn't change much. And uh, even the wheels are stock. And I Okay, it's the VRV Magenta Gold, if you're interested in the color. So from the front side, it looks pretty black. But once you switch the angles a little bit, at certain points, it looks purple. purple. Certain points, it looks gold. Uh, I have two set of wheels, so rapid for the flatter days mm. and Alpenis for the climbs. Saddle, I tried actually quite a lot of saddles. And the first specialized item that I have was actually on the Madonna. I just couldn't get along with any saddle. Long saga. I ended up with the power saddle. Mm. Putting a specialized saddle on the track did, did not feel right, right? <laughs> you know, you get me, right? But that saddle really solved my issue. Like, oh, suddenly when your saddle is comfortable, then you can ride long. Already. Before that, 60, 80, when your saddle starts to soar, you don't feel like riding long. Man. Mm. So I've been trying different, different special saddle and I like this one the most, the mm. Romin. This one mm. just fits me the most. But because you were on the power, it was a short nose. Yes. This is considered a rather longer nose, right? Correct. Uh, how, how do you know whether you, I, I need a short or long nose? For me, a saddle is so personal that you just have to keep trying different you ones. You just have to try. You just have to try. Sometimes they even do the split nose one for triathlons. Yeah, you know? yeah. They do the split yeah. nose one. Some people just ride with the split nose one. Uh -huh. So saddle, I would say, is something really personal. Mm. And in terms of the width, how do you choose? Uh, that one is with the seat bone width. Okay, so you use the one from Specialized. Yes, yes, yes. And then yes, they yes. determine which They determine okay. which width. I want one, uh, 143, the smaller one. Yes. Okay, got it. Apart from that, there are still some uh, intricate things. We have the knock light here. This is the blinder V, which uh, fits on any saddle, so it's nice. And I can basically take this out. It can mm. become a safety blinker also if I'm riding gravel or what, to put it on the back. Mm. So it's easy for me. Yeah. And then for now, I'm using a Garmin computer. Okay, yep. the 530. The 530, yes. Okay. Yep. Uh, 
in terms of the light, right? I I loved uh, Specialized. They had this uh, their their own light yeah, sticks. Yeah, sticks, <laughs> yes. When I was uh, riding on the Specialized saddle, uh, how come mm. you didn't choose that one? Not bright enough for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I have been approached by Knock. Right. Oh, okay. So it is a it is a sponsor light. We do have a relationship, and uh, they do more than just uh, lights itself. They also have stuff like solar chargers, mm. you know, uh, and the front light also doubles up as a power bank. Okay. So those were the stuff that I was really into during the bike packing phase. Mm. So it really came in a system that I find it interesting to work with, like, with the solar charging and everything. Yeah. So I picked that one up instead. Yeah. Okay. Nice. <laughs> Uh, what about the rest? You have a Dura Ace Group Set Twelve Speed. Yep. Uh, these are Rovell Rapid uh, CLX. Yep. What what are the that? What is that? Fifty. Uh, forty five fifty five. I think forty five fifty five. Need to clarify, son. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in terms of group set, I'm not sponsored, so I did write uh, Atos with with the red. Atos with the red. Diverge is with a mallet, which I really like. Mm. In front is rival, so it's road. At the back is GX, so it's mountain bike group set. So mm. you can put a ten fifty two mm. at the back. Really mm. nice. And then this one I have the Dura Acer. What's your ratio? Uh, Chain ring and the- 53, the fit, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> 52. Uh, 52.36. And then 11.30. Okay, quite 11, standard. Standard, 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 standard. Just right, standard. Okay, and your, what about the bars that you're using and the width? Uh, this is now 40 and 110, but I am planning to get the integrated one uh, when the stock finally comes, oh. because now I'll stop, uh, the whole yeah, yeah, world yeah, stop. Yeah, yeah. When it comes then, I think I'll switch to 38, uh, okay. 380, yeah, 380. And tires, sorry, I missed the tires. These are, uh, what, what These tires are, are these? 26S works turbo. I've ridden, because Specialized makes so many tires, I haven't finished the range, you know. Mm. It's not that I don't want to try, I want to try the in-house brand, so like uh, Turbo Cotton, yeah. the, the one before this, then currently I'm on the turbo. I tried Mondo before, so different, different width. This is on 26. Right. Yeah, I've ridden 28, which I think is more comfortable, but I'm not sure it's faster or not. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't know, I don't know. I'm yeah. not that fast. <laughs> he is fast, by the way. <laughs> I'm not that fast. I used to uh, own the s works turbo, and I think they were one of the rather very, very fast tires, but they tend mm. to wear out very fast because it's like a race tire. Mm. Uh, any issues with the tires for you? Because this is tubeless. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't run out as fast as the previous turbo cotton. Eh. Your turbo cotton very fast. Yeah. And more punctures, success, uh, you know, can get a puncture easier because yeah. uh, of the supplements. Ah. Mm. You cannot get everything. Ah. You sacrifice the puncture resistance for speed. Mm. But yeah, this feels quite all rounder for me. Yeah. And because it's uh, tubeless, Sometimes after a long ride, after three days bike packing, you come back, you can see some scars. Yeah. Then you know this one confirm if it's still one. <laughs> you, I, gone. I, you have to stop and change it. Yeah. Like yeah. some of my friends. <laughs> <laughs> Me and myself included, myself included. <laughs> so I've been very lucky with the Tudor system. I know some people they get unlucky things, you know, it blows out or something like that, or it's very hard to put in. Yeah. But when it's an in-house plus in-house brand, this one I can do with one lever. Honestly, mm -hmm. I can put it back without any lever. You can just put it back like that because it's measured within the same system. Uh. Right. So okay. that's why, yeah, works okay. for me. Right. Mm. Uh, what is the weight of your bike? Honestly, eh, with the rapid one, I have to go and wait to let you know later. Later, later we put, but with the Alpenis, it's 6.9. This is 6.9? With the oh, Alpenis, the Alpenis is 6.9. Oh, wow, yeah. that's light, man. Yeah. But you don't have a pound meter, do you? I do, yeah, it's a power meter. This is a, a oh, okay, okay, sorry, I can't see it. Okay. So, uh, power, in terms of power meter, I prefer the, the SRAM system. The one that comes with the quark. The quark, yeah, that's the one I'm using. Oh, that's the spider one. Better than this. Why? Why? First things first, form factor. Well, now I'm like whining it. <laughs> <laughs> this requires three small Allen keys to jabot. Uh, okay. You have a plastic cover. Mm -hmm. The quark one is rubber, right? Mm -hmm. And it's a very tactile metal casing that you can just rotate mm -hmm. like that. For the battery. You get me, right? <laughs> the feeling that you change. I mean, all these things is important. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and in terms of, but in terms of accuracy, all uh, both works. La. But in terms of form factor, that one really, it's uh, a lot better, you know. Uh, for I, did you did you choose this exactly you wanted for I or it comes, you had other options like uh, no, it comes with the it comes with the comes with, comes with the SL seven. Uh, uh, so at the time the way specialized deal with Shimano, that's the four I is the one that it comes with. Mm, okay, yeah. um, give us a mm. overview of all the bikes that you've you've had. T tell us about performance. Uh, since you've, you've owned quite, quite a number of very good bikes, uh, uh, tell us which you know what you like, don't like, and what's the pros and cons of each bike. Okay, <laughs> well, from the beginning. Uh, uh, you can just do a quick wrap up. Entry level bike is a good bike to start. 
I mean, if you can afford and if you know you're going to like cycling, you probably want to buy something more. But that bike went to Malacca, went to Langkawi. It's a bike that you can ride. If you want to start and you're not sure whether you're going to get into this long term, get an entry-level bike. It's fine. TT bike, very specialist bike. Yes, it's very fast for triathlon. It will be the optimal tool for you to use if you can stay in the position. It's not easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you need to train in that position. So it's a very specialist bike. We jump into the ATOS, a beautiful all runner. If you love climbing, you love the ATOS. Yes, uh, flats, it will be slower, especially if you're pulling. You're at the back, actually, it's pretty okay. When you're pulling, you can feel that you're mm. uh, slower, but it's a very all rounder bike. And there's no other bike that feels like that. Mm. It feels like a different thing altogether because it's so light, 6.2, you know. Yeah. When, when you get out of the saddle and you climb on the heels, it's just so different. Uh. <laughs> no yeah. other bike is like that. Then I jump into the Diverge first. Gravel bike. Now I have not ridden any other gravel bikes for comparison, but looking at my friend's bike and how I've ridden it, I've done uh, an extreme spectrum of things. I took it, I loaded it up with max weight with my camera gears, you know, 29 kg to ride, <laughs> went on to camping trips, huh. chill ride camping trips and it performed admirably. I also take it to races and yeah. because uh, gravel bike has less people join so sometimes your ranking is higher right yeah. so <laughs> my higher ranking races are actually all on the gravel bike and I took it to the limit at times mm -hmm. I had a front puncture at one of the races and I had to descend like 4-5 km you know very gnarly stuff right I went with the rim man <laughs> I went with the rim I didn't stop it was the front side I just went tong, 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 all the way so I thought gone already la. I thought gone already yeah. the terra wheels I came check nothing eh? oh, okay eh? so the off-road stuff because it's also imported from mountain bike technology, really can tahan, mm. really durable bike, really versatile. Mm. And yeah, if you want to explore off-road, a gravel bike is very good. <laughs> the STR is the evolution of that. So they already have the future shock in front, now they put it at the back. And yes, you do feel it front and back. There's a certain level of costness that it really just smoothens this out. Mm. So that's really good. Haven't ridden that that much yet. Then we go into the SL7, <coughs> the one bike to rule them all. Right, three times world champion. Right? Mm. <laughs> so you know it's an all-out race bike. At that time, I wasn't so fit. It was the time where the content started to grow. Right, it started to grow, and I put so much effort in content that I was riding less. So that was what happened last year, lah. My content side grew, my followers grew. That's how you know me. That's how we are here. <laughs> I knew you long time. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot, okay, that's how a lot of the audience. <laughs> But uh, I did sacrifice of some, some right time with the SL7. So that was the bike that I feel uh, it wasn't fulfilled its potential. But I'm very glad that the SL8 came along. And I also didn't get to ride it, you know. Uh, two months I put this in the house to make the bike view video, <laughs> uh, waiting for the day to ride it. But when the day finally came and I ride it, I did spend significant more time in this bike already compared to the SL7. Mm. I already have some personal bears and I feel this is the accumulation of their knowledge. Mm. It's not just the SL7. They are taking stuff from Venge. They are taking stuff from the ATOS. The good stuff, they try to put into one. I know it sounds ridiculous. I know I'm sponsored by Specialized. I know I'm biased. <laughs> but when you jump from the 7 to 8, it's ridiculous because the 7 is already an all-rounder bike. It already does everything pretty damn well, right? On the flat, it's fast. On the climb, it's fast. It's pretty comfortable. It's not like until, you know, you don't get all that kind of saw, you can ride long. Then when I jump on this side, it's like, okay, Okay, they mm. brought it one step further. Yeah. The comfort got even more comfortable. The lightness is close to ATOS. The Alpinist is 6.9. It's like, wow, that's a light bike. The fast part, we leave for the faster people <laughs> to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel the arrow. La, you know? <laughs> to, me, to me, how I feel it at the bunch, when they are riding 38, sometimes it's less than 100 watts. Mm. I'm at the back there I'm like smiling yeah. to myself 97 <laughs> 70 91 going at 38 you know yeah. that, that's how you can feel the arrow as a normal rider yeah. not as a rider sprinting <laughs> like, wow, this is, it's like so arrow <laughs> So right. I think that would be a brief summary of uh, the bikes that I have ridden so far. I, I appreciate the honesty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, okay. if I've got a question for you. So let's say if I own the SL7, ah. is it worth the upgrade to the SL8? Is it worth the amount of money that I need to pay? If it's just the frame, I think that's what a lot of people do because when they got the SL7, everything is decked up with it, right? Mm. It's just a frame change from the 7 to 8. Uh, of course, this depends on, I mean, if you already have an SL SL7, if you are willing to spend that kind of money on a bicycle, that means you really love cycling, really. Yeah. That means you can find, you can feel the finer details, really. I mean, for you, I'm sure you can feel between the rate and the Shimano 12 speed, the difference because you spend a lot of time on the bike. 
you can feel the difference between the seven and the eight. Mm. You can feel the difference. <laughs> yep. This is a very good marketing guide <laughs> for specialized. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, let's move on to the Instagram Q&A. Uh, oh, got, sure. got a quite a number of questions here. Let me try to pull it out. Mm. Is my camera still running? Yes, it is. Okay. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, interesting question. Cycle mm. first, then edit video or mm. edit video first, then cycle. <laughs> <laughs> During MCO, I realized that I have no filming gear at home, hmm. but I have a lot of bike stuff at home. <laughs> it was a pure hobby, right? It was a pure hobby. That's when I like, okay, maybe I should have more filming stuff because that is ultimately my native step. Right? That's the one that I <laughs> do hmm. for a living. Yep. Then I try to balance everything. I hmm. have not yet find the balance point. Like I mentioned uh, last year, when I go content, I cycle less. Mm. When I cycle more, my content definitely less. You ride 300 a day after that, how to think? Yeah. Can I yeah. even think? Eh? Next day, lie on the bed, and you have to think. <laughs> you know? yeah. So I have not find, found the perfect balance yet. I would say it's a unique position because you want to cycle and make videos. Both of these take a lot of time. Yeah, <laughs> I, I can agree. So it is uh, not the easiest to balance, but I find that just go with the flow. Lah. You know, sometimes the the cake come already, mm. you register for a race, you want to train hard for three months, then let go of the content a bit. Yeah. Sometimes you make content, wow, boom, oh, ngam, oh, the formula ngam already, go viral already, then forget about the bike. Lah. <laughs> Let's do tutorials. You know? <laughs> so I tend to go with the flow a little bit. And ah. that, I would say, is the beauty of uh, content creation. Right. You can go in your timeline. If you're really too busy, then let go for a while. Or yeah. No one will, you know, sack you or anything. <laughs> <laughs> so what yeah. sports camera do you use? Do you use any sports cameras? Or? Sports camera, I, I have a good relationship with Insta360. Okay, so I have been using uh, the Ace Pro, the Go3, as well as a few 360 cameras. Mm. For that side of things, uh, the consumer cameras, I am very drawn to 360 cameras mm. because you can do keyframes later. That means I can change the angle later. And that really satisfies the editor, director <laughs> because he gets so many options. You because, know? The fact 360, uh. because the fact is 360. Because the fact is 360. Of course, the visual quality is not commercial level yet. Yeah. So when you're doing 360, you know you are sacrificing Visual quality, quality. Yeah. by a lot, yeah, yeah. <laughs> by a country mile. <laughs> so uh, in terms of visual quality, the action cams will still do better. Yeah. But that one is more conventional. Right. You, you shoot this and that is the framing that you get. It's more okay. conventional. Yeah. Um, this question, I guess, uh, you, you, you pre it's a pretty obvious answer to this question. Uh, the okay. question is why specialize and not any other bike brands out there? Maybe let me tweak it a bit. I mean, the answer is obviously, you know, it's sponsored uh, no, by but, but I can, I can I can give you the answer. So okay. Because honestly, I, I was riding a track. Specialized has always been around. And while I was riding, why did I get a track then? Mm. And I didn't get a specialized is because at that time, I feel that specialized feels like a brand that a lot of people have. Feels very mainstream. And I like to be unique, la, you know, as a creative guy. <laughs> and the trap model has a very unique look. Mm. I got into it. But when, of course, I was sponsored first, but then I get to try out more than just the bike. I get to try out their different products. Mm. Their shoes, their helmet, their saddle. As I went along, you realize that, hey, actually all these products work. Sometimes you just want it to work. As long as the product don't give you any saddle saw, your legs, it's hard to find a shoe to fit, but when, jump into specialized shoe, you just say, hey, any new shoe now come, I can wear them. Yeah. Last time wasn't like that. So it is a brand that, say whatever you want, a lot of people have it because it works. Mm. And I find that, yeah, I just need a bike that works. Uh. I think uh, when I was riding the specialized uh, SL6 and Venge, mm. uh, obviously specialized being a very mainstream brand. Mm. Uh, then now I moved on to a non, I, I stay still mainstream, I, I went to a look. Ah, it looks, uh, yeah. uh, one, one, uh, Good thing I think about riding a mainstream brand is the availability of parts, mm. uh, especially on the secondhand market because everyone has it. They are yep. you know constantly trading things and yeah, like yeah, yeah. stem or whatever sizes, right? That's the mm. good thing about it. Now when I'm on the look, I have that a bit of worry, you know. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm missing certain things, how do I get them? And uh, that's that's I think a big problem. Little things also a spoke. Maybe you break two, yeah, right. Your spare one, you don't know where you put. You come to a specialized shop. Ah, it's okay. There's always <laughs> something available. Yeah. Yeah, put it on yours first. You go and write first. You yeah. know, continue. <laughs> There's no need to wait for, you know, for import from certain place ah, because yeah. it's such a mainstream brand. Then yeah. you understand why. Ah. You mm. understand why so many people buy specialized. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the next question is, why do you choose Shimano, not Shram or Campy? I have ridden both uh, SRAM and Shimano as mentioned. Uh, they both have their advantages and disadvantages that I like that I don't like. Can talk about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I feel for road, this shifts better. The mm. latest generation of Shimano, the way it engages each of the- The hyperglide. 
hyperglide. Yeah. And also the way, uh, the speed is also faster because it's a wired system. Mm. Then the other one, you get the wireless system. For SRAM, the off-road is better. When mm. it's wireless, you can talk to each other, right? Like the gravel bike has a mallet system, which, you know, it's like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> With a road bike in the front and you get the mountain bike gear ratio at the back. After you try that, I, I just don't want to ride anything else off-road already. <laughs> at the moment, at the moment. Yeah, yeah. At the moment. <laughs> at the moment, I just don't want to ride anything else for off-road already. So yeah. I like both in their own ways. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next question is, any tips to improve or upgrade my bike to make it faster? In your opinion, which is the biggest upgrade? I mean, the... I would say wheels. If I if you have a shallow wheel, if you have a box wheel, right? If you are looking for one upgrade that's gonna change the bike to be faster, it would be the wheels. The mm. wheels and the tires, those are the ones that you should try first. Okay. Mm. Not the frame? Wheels? When you depending on what his current bike is actually. So mm. I need to know what his bike is to diagnose properly. <laughs> <laughs> the bike doctor. <laughs> I would say I need to know what he's riding. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now on to your, your filming, right? Uh, mm. This guy would like to know how long does it take you to film a video? So maybe one of your short videos. Mm. What's uh, the thought process behind that? Because I make all kinds of videos for like in my career, I make a commercial usually is two months. So I'm very used to two months spent making a video. When it comes to Instagram reels, people are surprised how long it takes, right? Sometimes I spend four days or five days. Uh, but I also do the easier ones where half a day I just make and then I upload in the evening. I realize uh, case to case, uh, in my personal opinion, the ones that the videos that did better for me are the ones that I really spend time to craft. Really spend the time to craft everything like what I would do for a commercial. And when you spend that in the car, obviously it becomes longer and longer. The, mm. uh, like the desk one was five days, but the bike build was two weeks. It's two weeks because uh, there's more parts to it. Yeah. And there are also specialized parts that I'm not a bike mechanic, right? So if I need to tie the bar tape or switch something on the derailleur, I need to come to this shop <laughs> to get the mechanic to help me and yeah. then bring back to shoot. But I took my time. It's not like two weeks from day to night, no sleep. I took my time. If it feels that, oh, today I feel like I want to do two parts in then I just do two parts. So I just yeah. took my time to do it. Uh. Well, as a, as a content creator myself, okay, I don't mm. know if I, I, I even deserve that title as a content creator. <laughs> you, are, you, office, you are, you are, you are. <laughs> oh, when, when, I, when I do something, like when I edit video, right, I cannot leave it overnight. You know? I need to like, sit there and finish it. If not, I will lose that motivation or inspiration. So, <laughs> I don't know how you do it. Like you, you, you plan it for so long and then you know have to execute it in different days. Do you ever feel like you do it halfway and then like, I, I know I don't do it. Uh, I this, this rule I forgot where I hear it uh. I think it was Colin and Samir if the project is not 70% exciting to you don't do you get me uh? mm. so at the at the idea stage you must do this really. yeah. at the idea stage you must be very excited about this idea because you're going to spend two weeks yeah. on it right? yeah. you have to be really excited about this idea or the final image along the way the music that you find you need to be able to listen to one song for two weeks like, at least two weeks, at least really no if you're gonna edit every day yeah. in two weeks oh, okay, yes, you're yes. listening to the same yeah, song yeah, you know, yeah, from yeah. day to night the same song you know, <laughs> so you better find a song that you like yeah. you see? <laughs> so end of the day it ties back to what you enjoy doing the most yeah. let's be clear I cannot do this uh. I cannot do multiple camera <laughs> interview people I don't have this set up so he is a legit content creator <laughs> and expert in this field like we are very different I, mine is in a studio environment where I can shoot something 30 takes, 25 takes. I go into the edit, I can edit, I can look at it 15 times, 20 times. That yeah. somehow is the way that I feel comfortable working mm. and I don't mind. So I played it to my strength, so to speak. Yeah. So not everyone uh, needs to create like this. Yeah. Everyone should find the, the way that they create it, they enjoy the most mm. and then level up in a sense. Right. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense, not? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very uh, like, a, like a lecturer telling me. No, like, <laughs> <laughs> but for the SLA video and the, the Madome, you did the, the carousel, right? Mm. Was it the carousel, the one that you did? It was like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Uh, that was uh, the TT bike. That was the TT bike. Uh, yeah, for, for those two videos, talk about the inspiration and like, mm. uh, how do you even come up with the idea that, oh, this is going to work? <laughs> Actually, the, the, the biggest worry I have when I shoot a video is like, whether will this be popular? Will, will people watch? Mm -hmm. that, is that also something that you need to think of? Uh, at that point of time, I was still, in a way, finding my ways in content creation. I'm used to the full-scale production, right? And full-scale, when it comes to commercial, usually we always try to push for the limit. For content creation, the C word, la, consistency, right? That was the problem that uh, I always had. I can make one video, okay, I spend a lot of time and effort, but after that, I burn out already. I don't want to make it. After the wheel one, I stopped for very long <laughs> because it takes so much out of me. So that was the issue that I have. It's a different end of the spectrum kind of mm. thing. A lot of things fascinate me. 
and a lot of things I feel like, wow, I want to make video about it. But to actually put your hands to do it for a certain period of time, you really don't want to end up not liking the process. Like, like you say, halfway you do, then you don't like it. Of course, I gonna burn out a lot of times also. <laughs> Just like when you ride, you bong, yeah. it's like part of the journey, right? Yeah. right? Yeah. You bong, sit by the roadside, but the <laughs> why the hell I ride so long, I commit to this, right? Don't have the level, then don't do this kind yeah. of ride, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Content creation is the same. So you need to budget to a point, you still want to hit your PR, mm. you still want to go, uh, to a further distance that you've been before but don't go until blow yeah. out and bong uh. yeah. the we one definitely bong project <laughs> yeah. after that bong really, you know? <laughs> then how long do you stop after that quite long quite long actually I think almost a year a year yeah because wow. it's not my job ma. yeah 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 right it's just a hobby ma. and yeah. when the hobby become not so fun then you can always let it go but of course after that so last year was a good year for me to gauge like okay at this point then it feels that it's worth it lah of course, the uh, return where a lot of people enjoy your video and they give you very encouraging comments, you are always grateful. La. I'm very grateful for that. And it, it is your audience that keeps you going. I don't know for other creators. La. For me, I really love it when a video that I make it resonates with the audience. It feels like it's not just I make video for myself to see. Yeah. I made a video that was appreciated by a lot of people. People can understand, can feel something that they had never felt before. Mm. And they get something out of it and they tell me in the comments. And to me, that's really motivating. Mm. Of course, you cannot just depend on that. You must also budget. Not every video is going to go viral. You just have to understand yeah. that. And you need to fail. Right? You, yeah. every, anything you do, you suck in the beginning. Right? Yeah. <laughs> just like riding a bike, you know, you suck in the beginning every way. It's painful. You don't understand how people can ride so fast and so long. And yeah. you're like 40 km, you cannot already. Yeah. It's the same for uh, making videos. So as long as you keep training, you know, you understand the ins and outs of making video or riding a bike, you eventually progress. Ah. Mm. So yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Uh, we deviated a bit too much. Lah. Let's oh, go back to, let's really go back to yeah. cycling. No, 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 no uh, like a road bike? Yes. Wow, this is a question that I never really think <laughs> honest, about. Honest it. answer. Uh. Let me think about it. Uh. <laughs> Chia is not here, right? Uh, he, he's not here. Like, he no, but, but, uh, it's, but it's also unfair because I have ridden a track and a canyon before. And I understand uh, you know, the level that they can provide. And they are good bikes, you know. So if I have to buy a bike now and it's not the SL8, uh, <laughs> or will it still be SL8? The fact I, that you've ridden that salad before already. Uh, already it's not just that. I also end up, la, I mean, one thing led to another. I end up riding with my friends. A lot of them ride specialized bikes. Hmm. A lot of them ride specialized bikes and uh, SL8. So it, it does feel that it, I fit in the group. There's also the social aspect. I mean, yeah. riding bikes is more than just I ride my bike and chase my PI. It's also riding out with friends. Do you, mm. you feel the poison is strong? <laughs> I'm part of the poison, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I am part of the group poison trying to poison other people to join this cow that we have, right? But I would say either a track or a canyon. I think- Track I think, or a canyon? Uh, probably canyon. Because yeah. I, I'm curious. Oh, maybe the <laughs> next part you're Kenyan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> probably, probably, probably. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about the uh, last, last one before we wrap up. Uh, uh, okay. Riding experiences. Uh, how, how long have you been? How, how, what's the longest distance you've, been, you, you've ridden? And mm. uh, any particular interesting uh, stories to tell? The extreme side of things. Uh, I mean, okay, with the ATOS is the Everest thing. Uh, the time when you climb the same hill for 220 times, train your patience, uh, right? <laughs> That's how <laughs> yeah. you get the patience. But uh, would I do it again? Probably not because now that the world has opened up already, then it becomes like, I want to go far and ride far and see different things, right? With uh, the bikes that I have, the longest was 300 km. I did that three times. The latest one was the fastest one. Uh. But in terms of uh, multi days, I've ridden three days longest. I don't know how to break the barrier because at the third day, you're already like, oh my God. <laughs> I just want to hop in the car and sleep, you know? Yeah, 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 <laughs> After yeah. the third day. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I am looking, I aspire to go right in other places because you know, like Malaysia, no way in any top 10 list, Malaysia is going to make it into the top 10 place to cycle, yeah. right? And uh, watching a lot of videos online as a cyclist, or you watch GCN, you watch this, well, there's so many other nice places to cycle. Yeah. I need to actively make that happen. Because if not, you know, I 
shut myself in the studio and make content kind of guy. Yeah. Very zi pi one. <laughs> right also, right? Same place, yeah. you know, in the same realm, in the same yeah. people. So I need to actively put myself out there in the one more, I feel, yeah. to gather more writing experiences because yeah. I feel those are the experiences that money cannot buy. Yeah. When you say go to a new country to experience something, a different cycling culture, those yeah. are the things that I aspire to do. Have you brought your bike overseas before? Uh, yes, for the gravel race once. Okay. I only ridden on overseas road. once. Okay. So that one gravel race, that was the only time I ridden overseas. Where was it? It's in the Philippines. It was last year. Ah. So I would like to do it more. Wow. The, the, sorry, back onto the Everest thing, right? Which, which route was it and how do you prepare for that? There was, I did it twice. Once is uh, within 10 km because uh, during MCO or CB, right? CB. <laughs> <laughs> CB. During CB, <laughs> you can only ride within 10 km. Within the 10 km, in where I live, there's only one hill. Mm. <laughs> there's only one hill. It's 42 mm. meter elevation. Okay. So to do everything, you need to do like 190, yeah. two, two times or something like that. Yeah. So I did it once there. And then the second time, I actually wanted to make content out of that. And I did it in front of my office hill. <laughs> so because that's when you have a base and you have, can put food, right? Yeah. After I did that, very unfortunate, the second lockdown happened. Hmm. So I couldn't make content out of it because it doesn't make sense for me to, didn't make sense for me to put out everything content while it was locked down. That one is a total lockdown, I cannot even write. That's when I make the light painting one with the ethos. Mm. The one with the light painting, yeah. that one also took very long to do. <laughs> that one also took very long to do. Wow. So yeah. Okay, uh, I think that's it. We've hey. covered quite a lot and it's already almost uh, 50 minutes. Not nice, sure nice, if nice. watch until this, this far. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, nice talking to you. Thank you so much. Yes, nice, thanks, thanks for having me. Thanks, thanks for, for replying me. to my DM and uh, all the best with uh, cycling and of course your ambassadorship with uh, Specialized. Uh, anything you would like to say to your fans out there? Oh, first, uh, let's wish Umpa all the best. So, New <laughs> Year, hopefully, you, you know. Hopefully, uh, <laughs> hopefully, everything is smooth. <laughs> hopefully, all, uh, both the cycling and the co uh, content uh, gets better but for the other cyclists out there I think important thing is ride safe lah. Yeah. I think that is something that we we know but we need to keep reminding ourselves there's no point taking unnecessary risks lah, huh? yeah. we do this for for our health lah. Kayu yeah. we always say it's for health okay uh, so safety first and uh, ultimately enjoy what you do lah, whether it's making videos or riding bikes end of the day you have to Enjoy yourself. Sorry. Make yourself happy. I uh, think that's what's most important. Uh. Thank you, uh, Quick, and uh, see you again, man. Thank you. <laughs>